Headline, Soviet experiment attempts to create human-chimp hybrid. Is it true? Could it be done? Could we breed a human-chimpanzee hybrid? A human Z? Let's dig in and find out. From folk stories to cryptids, science fiction to religion, many cultures have wondered what it would be like to be part human and part monkey, imagining the internal conflict of the wild, natural instincts of an ape, and the intellectual and emotional needs of a human being. If we could breed a man-ape hybrid, then maybe we can answer this question that we have been itching to know for centuries. To understand if it could be done, we need to look at other hybrids that we know are possible. A hybrid is when two members of different species mate and produce viable offspring. In the past, we discussed chimeras, which also have DNA from two different species. But chimeras are not hybrids. In a hybrid, every cell has 50% of the DNA from each parent. Each cell has 50% of their DNA from their mother's species and 50% of their DNA from their father's species. In interspecies chimeras, some cells have 100% DNA from one species, while other cells have 100% DNA from another species. In a chimera, these two different lineages of cells come from different zygotes, different sperm and egg combinations. All the cells in a hybrid came from the same zygote, the meeting of a sperm from one species with the egg of another. Examples of hybrid species include the mule, the offspring of a female horse and a male donkey, hinny, a male horse and female donkey, kama, camel and llama, liger, a lion and tigress, tigon, a lioness and male tiger, and the pizzly bear, a grizzly and polar bear cross. These hybrids are often sterile. When they mate, they cannot produce viable offspring. We tend to categorize two organisms as being of the same species if they can produce fertile offspring. If the child of two animals can also bear children itself once it gets to reproductive age. There isn't a solid, airtight genetic definition of species, though, and occasionally our taxonomic categories don't reflect the natural world. Many of these hybrids, like ligers, pretty much only occur in captivity, but pizzly bears are increasingly being born naturally as grizzly and polar bear territories begin to overlap. Unlike many other hybrids, pizzlies are not sterile. This demonstrates how our taxonomic lines of species are blurry. We often define two animals as being of different species if they are unable to produce fertile offspring. And yet we define polar and grizzly bears as different species. Polar bears and grizzlies branched off around the same time as modern humans and Neanderthals. Modern humans, Homo sapiens sapiens, are not the only humans to have ever existed. There are many species of archaic humans, species also in the genus Homo, that are now extinct. Many of these species existed in the early history of modern humans. Our species lived alongside other humans like Homo erectus, Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, or Neanderthals, Homo sapiens denisova, or Denisovans, and Homo floresiensis, a shorter human species called hobbits. There's ample genetic evidence suggesting that modern humans, us, Homo sapiens sapiens, bred with now extinct archaic human species. We interbred with Neanderthals and Denisovans, two human subspecies. Genetic material from Neanderthal fossils was sequenced in 2010 and found evidence of interbreeding when compared to the genome of modern humans. Today, different populations have different levels of Neanderthal genes in their genome, but many of today's humans share about 0.3 to 2% of their genome with Neanderthals, with some estimates as high as 4%. If you are of Eurasian descent, it is very likely you carry some Neanderthal DNA. Many of us are direct descendants of human-Neanderthal hybrids, which is not too surprising since our two species were so closely related. But why do we need to be so closely related? Why couldn't a giraffe and fish mate and produce viable offspring? In Greek mythology, a human queen fell in love with a bull, mated, and produced a half-human, half-bull creature, the Minotaur of Crete. Could something like this be done in real life? Unlikely. There are a number of prezygotic barriers preventing hybrids from unrelated species, obstacles that prevent fertilization from occurring. When a sperm fertilizes an egg, it deposits its DNA into the egg and forms a cell called a zygote. If the sperm does not reach the egg or properly insert its genetic material, the zygote doesn't form and no new baby develops. The first prezygotic barrier is simply the lack of sexual attraction between well-adjusted members of the two different species. Overcoming that barrier, mating can be impeded by incompatible genitalia between the species. 
If species don't want to mate or physically can't, they won't be able to produce offspring in a natural setting. If two species are able to mate, their obstacles don't stop there. Near the egg are signaling molecules that tell the sperm to swim faster. It is possible that some of these signals are species specific, meaning a sperm of a different species may not be able to recognize a human's signaling molecules. Another prezygotic factor is in a structure called the zona pellucida, which forms a protective layer around the egg. The sperm cannot penetrate this layer unless it releases enzymes that eat away at the coat surrounding the egg, allowing the sperm to fertilize it. There are proteins within the zona pellucida which can cause the sperm to release its enzymes when bound to receptors on the sperm. Once again, a sperm of a different species may have different receptors that don't recognize foreign zona pellucida proteins, meaning they don't release the enzymes and don't reach the egg. This sounds like a serious barrier, but don't worry. The Zona Pellucida may not be a problem for human ape hybrids after all. In 1977, a study found that human sperm could in fact penetrate the Zona Pellucida of gibbon eggs. Gibbons are apes, like humans. Among the apes, we are more closely related to what are called the great apes. Humans, chimps, bonobos, gorillas, and orangutans. Gibbons are a step removed. They are lesser apes. Go further and we get monkeys. In this study, human sperm were able to penetrate the zona pellucida of gibbon eggs, both in in vitro fertilization and via artificial insemination directly into a gibbon's fallopian tube. The gibbon eggs retrieved were not implanted again, and may have been too immature for proper fertilization, but the study does demonstrate that the zona pellucida of an ape can be penetrated by human sperm. They also found that human sperm could not pass through monkey zona pellucida, it seems apes are as far as we can go. Other experiments have found that human sperm can also penetrate gorilla zona pellucidae. Since chimps are even more related to us than gibbons, it is reasonably likely our sperm can penetrate their zona pellucida. But if we wanted to hybridize with non-ape species, these obstacles are pretty easy to get around. Humans aren't attracted to chickens, for example. But what if someone injected a chicken egg directly with human sperm? Would it make a homunculus? Probably not. There is something called the hamster zona free ovum test, or simply hamster test, used to help diagnose infertility in human men. To test the effectiveness of a man's sperm, this test washes away the zona pellucida from a hamster egg. This allows the human sperm to fertilize the hamster egg, and this actually does create a hybrid embryo called a humster. The humsters are never implanted or allowed to develop. They are simply used to confirm a sperm's ability to fertilize, but if some unscrupulous doctor decided to do so, would we be able to grow a race of human-hamster hybrids? Unlikely, since our barriers to viability do not end with fertilization. We can overcome the prezygotic factors using artificial insemination or in vitro fertilization, but now we face the post-zygotic barriers, genetic issues that occur after fertilization which may cause the embryo to be unviable, to die before birth. Many hybrids are sterile because of differences in chromosome number that cause problems in the formation of gametes, sex cells. A chromosome is a single, long DNA molecule that is packaged and condensed to fit inside a cell. Different chromosomes have different genes that code for different proteins, and two copies of the same chromosome have the same types of genes. Each sex cell only has one copy of each chromosome. Every other cell in the body has both copies. When sex cells form, the precursor cells, stem cells that turn into sex cells, divide twice so that each sex cell only has one copy. When the cell divides, copies line up next to each other. Each copy is from a different parent. If the parents had different numbers of chromosomes, if the parents were of different species, some chromosomes will not have a copy. That means that if the sex cells formed, some chromosomes would be missing. Missing chromosomes could mean missing DNA, missing genes important for proper cell functioning. Missing chromosomes can also cause defects or abnormalities in offspring, or cause unviable offspring for the same reason. Hamsters not only have a differing number of chromosomes from humans, their genome is also dissimilar to humans and many important genes. Many hamster genes code for proteins that are incompatible with human proteins and are unable to facilitate the chemical reactions or form the structures necessary for proper cell functions. These issues prevent the development of humsters. 
In humans, the only full monosomy, the only condition of having a lone chromosome with one copy, is Turner syndrome, a single X chromosome instead of two, or instead of an XY pair. People with Turner syndrome often have webbed necks, are at greater risk of certain diseases, and are usually infertile. Differences in chromosome number exist between species. Humans have 46 chromosomes, and chimps have 48. Horses have 64, and donkeys have 62 chromosomes. If a horse and donkey can create a mule despite their chromosome differences, perhaps a human and chimp can form an infertile human Z. The more closely related the species are genetically, the more likely a viable hybrid could be born. How similar are humans and chimps? Well, after the Human Genome Project, we then sequenced the entire chimp genome and confirmed that we share about 98% of our DNA with chimps. Wait, but why is it that I share 98% of my genes with a chimp, but only 50% with a sibling? And I only share 0.3 to 2% with Neanderthals, but chimps are clearly less related to us than Neanderthals, and, and, and I share 50% of my DNA with a banana? What's going on? Humans and chimps share 98% of the same genes, meaning we both have genes for the same kinds of proteins, with the same kinds of traits. We both have genes for thumbs and hair, but we don't have genes for dorsal fins or petals. We share about 50% of genes with bananas, but we don't have peels or other plant traits. We don't make those proteins. We do make arms and hair and eyeballs like chimps. Humans and chimps make similar proteins with our DNA which do similar things. Some of our genes make proteins which do things that proteins and bananas do, but more of our genes do stuff that chimp genes do than banana genes do. You and your sibling share 50% of the same alleles for genes, 50% of the same versions of genes. You and your sibling may both have hitchhiker's thumbs or red hair. You share almost 100% of the same types of genes with members of the same species. For example, you share the same types of genes for thumb development, but in someone with a hitchhiker's thumb, they have a different version of that gene if you don't have hitchhiker's thumb. You both have the same genes for thumbs, but they have the specific gene for a hitchhiker's thumb. We share the gene for hair, but we have different versions of the hair genes if I have black hair and you have blonde hair. That 2% of genes you may share with a Neanderthal means you would share 2% of alleles with a Neanderthal. 2% of your genes are identical to Neanderthal genes, but about 99.7% of your genes are the same types of genes as Neanderthals. We both have genes for skulls and language and standing upright, etc. But these genes may not always be the same exact version, the same exact DNA sequence. 98% of the types of genes we have are shared with chimps. 99.7% of the types of genes we have are shared with Neanderthals. Over 99.9% .9 of the types of genes we have are shared with other modern humans. You share 50% of the versions of those genes with your mom. 50% of your genetic sequence is identical to your mom's genetic sequence. If you have Neanderthal ancestry, only about 0.3 to 2% of the versions of your genes are shared. Only 0.3 to 2% are identical with a Neanderthal ancestor. If we share 98% of our types of genes with chimpanzees, what are the different 2% of genes involved in? What is it that makes us human? Most of the genetic differences are for transcription factors, splicing enzymes, and other non-coding regions. Most differences are in genes regulating other genes, which makes sense for mutations leading to speciation and punctuated evolution. These are small differences in the genetic code that impact the expression of many other genes meaning that while the genomes between humans and chimps are not so different, the genes we have turned on or off are quite different in certain cases. In coding genes, about half are for genes involved in olfaction. In humans, a lot of these are now pseudogenes, non-functional DNA, so we have a worse sense of smell than chimps. Others have to do with bone, hair, and reproductive development. Very few genes are even involved in brain development. Those that are, are involved in the number of rounds of cell division that brain cells go through, human cells dividing more. We have very similar neurons, but humans have more of them. Through emergence of neurons, we get the human brain. Overall, we are more similar to chimps than we'd think, genetically and neurologically. 
It isn't so far-fetched to assume a human Z could be born. Surely an attempt has been made to create a human Z. One doesn't need to dig too deep into human history to see the depraved things we've done. Has there ever been a credible case of a human Z? Oliver was a creature born in the 50s and died in 2012 that looked like a chimp, yet he walked like a person. He had a flat face and was less hairy than most chimps. A human woman, who once owned Oliver, claimed that he was sexually attracted to her and attempted to mount her. A 70s TV special in Japan conducted a DNA test and found that the majority of genetic samples showed that Oliver had 48 chromosomes, like a normal chimp. The program claimed that two samples, however, showed that Oliver had 47 chromosomes, halfway between the 46 of humans and 48 of chimps, consistent with what we would expect of the hybrid. This result was well within the means of error, however. An analysis of Oliver's DNA in 1998 found that he, in fact, had 48 chromosomes, like a chimp, and an analysis of his mitochondrial DNA found that he was a Central African chimpanzee. Unfortunately, Oliver was not our human Z. But has anyone ever tried to make one? Ilya Ivanovich Ivanov was a Soviet biologist who revolutionized artificial insemination. In the 1920s, he attempted to create a human-chimp hybrid, or human Z. He artificially inseminated female chimps with human sperm. Unfortunately, none of the surviving chimps were able to conceive. Ivanov was later exiled to Kazakhstan and died of a stroke. This work has led to speculations that Stalin himself wanted to create an army of human ape super soldiers or laborers, a claim which is wildly unsubstantiated. Ivanov's experiment was done to better understand how closely related humans were to apes. Of the three female chimps which were inseminated with human sperm, autopsies found no evidence of conception. The poor conditions the chimps lived in led to their deaths. This experiment inspired an unfinished Soviet opera called Orango, which was about the trials and tribulations of a half-man, half-ape living in the Soviet Union. As an aside, Ivanov's successor, V.K. Milovanov was a pioneer in the field of artificial vaginas. Before his cutting-edge invention, bull semen was collected by inserting a sponge into the vagina of the mounted animal. Milovanov's apparatus made the hassle of semen collection a thing of the past. Based on Ivanov's attempt, it seems we've never had a credible case of a human Z. He was unsuccessful, but to be fair, he was working at a time before in vitro fertilization was developed, and he had a very small sample size. All we can do is speculate. Maybe one day someone out there who is brave enough will find the truth once and for all. So, to reiterate, two animals are considered different species if they cannot produce fertile offspring. Our definition of species is not perfect, however, since grizzly and polar bears can produce fertile, pizzly bears. Modern humans interbred with other human subspecies, and many of us today are direct descendants of human Neanderthal hybrids. Lack of attraction, incompatible genitalia, and incompatible signaling molecules can prevent fertilization in animals of different species. Incompatible zonopellucida molecules, chromosome number discrepancies, and genetic differences can make interspecies hybrids unviable. It has been demonstrated that human sperm can penetrate the zona pellucida barrier of ape eggs. Removal of the zona pellucida barrier from a hamster egg can allow it to be fertilized by a human sperm. This is done to test male fertility. The resulting hamster embryo cannot fully develop due to genetic differences between humans and hamsters. Humans and chimps share around 98% of the same types of genes genes for eyes and spines and arms. You and your father share 50% of the same exact versions of genes, the same alleles for eye color or hitchhiker's thumb. You share about 100% of the same types of genes with your fellow humans. There hasn't been a truly credible recorded case of an undeniable human Z. In the 1920s, a Soviet scientist artificially inseminated three female chimps with human sperm. All three died due to harsh conditions, and none were able to conceive. At this time, we don't know for sure if such a creature is possible. Alright, so that's about it. I hope you found that useful. I hope that changed your life. I hope that you... I hope that you're doing well. Have a good one. Bye.